All right, it's finally happening. I'm Poisonberry, and I'm going to teach you in a multi-part series how to create the Request Express. That's all this this nonsense going on right here. So this is the workflow I use to make uh, free requests in my Discord server. It's, uh, sometimes I like to use it for regular images, but I tend to be more experimental. Um, but when it comes to just a one-shot, like... I want to make an image fast and not use my brain. This is what I use. Um, so there's a lot of brain power going into making it, but once you make it once, it's it's you can turn your brain off. So it's pretty nice. So we're gonna start here. Uh, somebody did ask if I could show how I make goth girls, so I figured that'd be a perfect subject matter for this tutorial. Uh, let's see. Before I start off, um, what was I gonna say? So prompts you. You need to understand what words mean. That's the that's the first lesson. So I think a lot of you guys were trying to imitate the goth girls I was making by just typing goth girl or something. And then you were probably having a hard time understanding why you keep getting images that look like this. And the reason is the prompt goth has very strong bias for uh for goth Lolita. Which is like this type of stuff right here. This Japanese uh, style or whatever. And that's not really the one that Western people tend to think about. Western American people, we have a different a different image of God. It's usually just a white girl wearing a bunch of black and then whatever. Alright. So that's that. Understand what words mean. Type what you want to see. Just You just type what you want to see. That's it. I, 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 I know the aesthetic for, for the style, at least here in the States. So I just, I literally just type those words and then you get it. It's literally that simple. Um, you have to know what you want to see. That's, that's, that's the first lesson. All right. So here we have a basic setup, very basic setup, but we don't actually, we don't like this. We don't like this text prompt. We don't like these blocks. And the reason is anytime you do something downstream, you need positive and negative conditioning. So that means, let's say... I'm doing something with like a Laura, right? Let's say I have like a Tago or something, my waifu. A Tago. Do this, do this, do this. If I do something downstream, actually, no, I got a better one. So all you cultured people, hyper anatomy. If I'm doing something hyper anatomy, let's say, but then downstream, I'm only going to be detailing the face. Like, it, you, you don't want this. You don't want something that deals with like body parts to have an influence on the face lore like it's it's not gonna it's not gonna help you out so it's better to just not have it and because of that we don't like these text and code text and code blocks because every time you have a different clip you basically have to duplicate these and that becomes really annoying after a while is when your workflow has like a bunch of these in there and then every single time you change something, it's like, all right, I changed this. All right, crap. Now I got to come over here and make the same change here. I got to make the same change here. Got to make the same change here. That's really annoying. We don't like doing that. So we're not going to do that. We're going to use some tools to make our lives easier. And that tool is the was suite. There is a text multi-line node. Text multi-line. It might look very similar to this, except you notice there's no clip input. The conditioning output isn't there either. It's a string output. So what's going on there? What's a string? What's the difference between a string and conditioning class? Johnny, can you answer? No, he's asleep. All right. So crash course in AI. The way this works is, so I'm sure a lot of you have heard the term token before. You know, the clip has to, you know, they, we need a numerical representation of the words. AI doesn't really know words very well. It understands math. So we have to convert these into numerical representations and then based on things like the order of the words, the frequency of the words, maybe like your emphasis, stuff like that, all this gets converted into something called a tensor. And a tensor is basically just a really, really complex mathematical object that represents what this is trying to do. All right. So if that doesn't, if that doesn't really make sense, that's completely fine. Um, all you need to understand is that these get converted into a mathematical object called a conditioning block. So that's why this is orange. That's why this is black. This is not conditioning. You can't plug this into here. We need a node 
to convert the string into conditioning. But first, we got to combine all these together. Why do I have four? What's the point of that? Why are you doing that? So I'll show you. Text. Text concoctinate. Make a concoction out of your text. So concoctinate means to just shove at the end. So that's all this is doing right here. Is it, It's taking all of the... It's taking this prompt. We're going to do something. All right. This is why I do this. Because I know a lot of people like to use quality prompts, right? Uh, UHD, why not? 8K, why not? So now, if you do something downstream, or let, let's say you're just doing something like you have this, right? But then downstream, you're doing the face or something. Then instead of having a brand new clip text and code with like all of your beautiful face, you know, best quality masterpiece, you don't have to type that. You don't have to type that again. You can just take this string and then plug it into the thing with your other thing for your face and then it's just easier. It's, you have to type things less and you have to worry about things less. It's it's nice. So we get this, right? String. This just combines it all together, whatever, string. But we can't we can't plug this into here like I said before. We need a different node. So we go to text operations, text to conditioning. And then this allows the text to function kind of like this a little bit. So we bring the string into this text field, this clip, this clip right here, this clip into here. So I'm gonna bypass this so that we don't get any NSFW. Put that clip into here, and now this can be our positive prompt. So we don't need this text and clip prompt block anymore because we got all this. So the, all right, another reason why I like doing this. So I tend to separate my prompts based on like what they're doing. This is the subject, this is quality or whatever. And then I don't know setting busy street. So it just helps keep it helps keeps things organized. So if they're let's say you just let's say you don't want to change the actual look of the person, you don't want to change any of this, but you do want to change the location. It's it's so much easier doing it like this because instead you'd have to like go through this and like look for that specific thing and change it. But now that now it's it's just right there, bro. It's so much easier. So let's see. This image is gonna change. Ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. It's still working. We're good. Looks good. All right. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the negative. So we can just literally clone this, drag it over here, and then paste the stuff, paste all my negative embeddings, my low quality, whatever, and then connect these up in the same way. It's like, do you really need four blocks for negative conditioning? You might. I don't know. What if it keeps generating girls with glasses? Boom. Easy. Super easy. It's so convenient. I love I love doing it this way. Just clip, clip. Negative, negative. Key prompt. Uh, Alright, sometimes when you add was nodes and you hit Q, it won't do anything. It's a, it's a bug. Just hit refresh. And then you'll be fine. Everything's fine. Don't worry. So, ooh, look at her. She's cute. What's up, girl? Simping over these anime cuties. Oh, ho, ho. her face is unacceptable, though. It's unacceptable. This is unacceptable. No. But that's okay. This is only the initial generation. We don't really care too much about the... We don't care too much about the quality in the initial generation. We care about anatomical errors. We care about, like, five arms. We care about, like, this. this hand honestly might be an issue... So any 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 problems that you have usually tend to get exacerbated later down. So if you have things like weird creases in the skin or like she's got like she like very obviously has too many fingers like that's that's going to get worse as we go down the problem as we go down. So it's usually a good idea to babysit this. You know, make sure you have a good understanding of prompting, shoot for, you know, a 90% success rate with good images. So cool. Ooh, ho, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. I love that shape. All right. <laughs> Fuck. So this is step one. Everything we've done right now is just step one. This is all step one. But it's going to get much more complicated, as we saw earlier. So now we want to, we want to group things up to keep it organized. This is not something you want to skip. Believe me. Because once you start, once you get like 100 nodes... 
not a hundred, but it, it gets really complicated really fast, and then it becomes very difficult to figure out what the heck is actually going on. So it's just a good idea to, to label things, to organize things, even give things colors. Color coordination. Colors work really well for me because I'm like, I'm weird. So we're going to color this green, going to color this red. Color this one green. And color this one red. Green means go, red means stop. All right. So green is our positive, red is our negative. Now it's easy to tell just by looking at it. All right. The see-through purple means it's bypassed, which means that it effectively doesn't exist. So yeah, anything that goes through here just comes out and this it does not affect it at all. So we're still not done. There's one more thing, one more group I want to set up. That is for all of this right here. Let's organize this a little bit. Let's condense it a little bit, make it a little smaller. It's not taking up all the space in the world. And then we're going to give this one a title as well. The title for this will be initial generation or base generation or something like that. Just so that we know what it is. Believe me, this is not about being a control freak. This is from personal experience. You want to label your things and know what's going on because this gets very complicated very fast. And the last thing you want to do is spend like 10 minutes fishing through your nodes to, to find that setting that you're trying to change. All right. Base gen. And then, what else? Keep the bay over here. And just for the sake of practicality, I'm going to clone these a few more times. So generally, I usually have a lore stack with three lores. One's for character, one's for anatomy, and the other one's for like style or something. So we're going to plug those in here, plug those in here where they belong. And we're going to give the checkpoint and Laura stack a group as well just so we could find it easier you know why not make our lives as easy as possible this here put this here put this here and edit group title model Laura stack all right and you know let's put the vein here too the vague goes the vague goes literally everywhere so we're gonna we're gonna need to keep track of that little bad boy so, all right, this is step one to creating the request express. We've organized our groups. We've been able to organize our prompts, organize our negative prompts. You know, I'm gonna give this a title, why not? Positive text, why not? Just label everything. Negative text, that's what the minus sign means. Space gen, lore stack, conditioning, conditioning. Boom, we got our base image. I think that's I think that's pretty good so far. All right. So this is this is this is part 1. I hope you learned something. In part 2, we're going to uh make the image bigger and make it a little higher quality. We're going to do that with some control nets. And uh yeah, cool. Any questions, leave them in the comments. Uh see you in the next episode.